stand up for yourself and I'll back you up cause problems don't solve themselves I'll tell you what instead of would or could I think you should draw a line in the sand and stand your ground it's for your own good Hello, my name is Roy Poyan, and I am the director of Families Impacted by Opioids. We're the producer of The Voice of Families and Addiction, and I want to thank you and welcome you to our next episode of the three Ds, determine a solution, develop a decision, and design a plan of action. These are much needed coping skills for the families to use on a daily basis. So let's get started. What we want to first do is to identify the source of this. Um, it's actually in your book, Learning Module Number Three of the Family Solution Finder Learning Series. The title is The Family Solution Finder 3D's Coping Skill Workbook, Mod Learning Module Three. You can find this on our website as a download for free, or you can order it on Amazon.com. We're gonna take a look today at the second, which is to, to determine a solution, excuse me, to develop a decision. It's part of the 3D uh, skill set. Uh, determine a solution, develop a decision, and design a plan of action. So what we want to first do is we want to say, listen, if we're going to make a decision, let's make it a value-based decision. And oh, there's been many, many models based around uh, mental health and psychology and business and strategy designed around the word value-based as it relates to decision model. And, and when we're looking at value-based, we're basically saying, so do you know your values? Before you go off making a decision, you don't want to make a decision that's going to counter what are your values. So you could certainly take a YouTube and, and, and do some studies, uh, look at a couple of clinical papers that are done where it's empirically proven studies on the topic of values. But what you're basically doing is you're saying there is a certain set of you know ways that we live our life that are not negotiable there are our values and when we're going to take away from them we want to do it consciously we want to know that we are taking away from our values in order to make this decision and how we're going to respond you, you don't want to compromise your values in a decision and then hate the decision when really it was the compromising of your values that you hated and you just did it without really calculating how much of a hit against us was that. So I hope that there's some clarity, some clarity in that. But that really is the, one of the first things you, you want to do as a family overall. And the way that you do that is you sit as a family and you get out a piece of paper and you, and you say, okay, I want everybody to write down the top three things that they most value that are not negotiable that you feel are important. You could find love and honesty and you know open communication these are all values uh, trust uh, and then ask each person to read off theirs and where you find that everybody is kind of coming up with the same one it might be love then you know that that's a family value because everybody in the family sees that as being one of their top threes and then you might find some others uh, maybe not in terms of the other two so what i'd like you to then do is start to take a look on page 61 of the uh, learn, learning module number three, and, and you'll see that um, the first step in developing a decision is to identify exactly what happened. Now this isn't like a reiteration of all your emotions. Leave your emotions out of it. What happened? How did it happen? Exactly how did it happen? And who was involved? And when you do that, write it down. One, two, three. What happened? How did it happen? And who was involved? And we outline that for you in this, on this page uh, in the book. So the second step is now let's analyze the situation that this all happened. Because you're addressing typically a situation or a problem or an issue when you're making a decision. So accept, accessing the, the, the problem means you need to be able to describe what's happening that's not working remember before we wrote out what's happening 
Now we're writing out what's happening that's not working, okay? And then and, and the next one is now identify what is causing this not to work. What's causing this not to work? Remember, you're analyzing the situation in step number two. And then in the next area, you're going to start to say, in what areas did this create an impact or a disruption? Well, I mean, if it happened and it's not a problem, then we don't really, why are we making a decision? Obviously, something happened in a way that it's impacting and creating a disruption or it didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. The third step is, what's the number one contributing factor that's making this thing happen that's not working correctly for you? What is the number one contributing factor? Okay, well, let's, let's just stop. Let's say, let's go back. What was number one? Exactly what happened. What did happen? How did it happen? Who did it happen to? Step number two describe exactly what's not working and then identify what's causing it to happen. And then in number three, in what areas did this create an impact? Okay, it, it impacted you know, his work, it impacted our family, it impacted his church life, his social sphere. You know, there's a whole bunch of things, his finances. Okay, so then you're saying in the third step, what is the number one contributing factor that's creating this thing not to work well, okay? And then you gather their information. Oh, I thought we already did that. No, we, we haven't said anything about gathering information. We've only said what you're aware of. And that could be totally wrong, okay? We got no idea whether you got it right or not. You might be close, you might be far. But doesn't it warrant the fact that you're making a decision, so let's get it right. Garbage in, garbage out. So. We want to make sure that we put good information, quality information, confirm the source of the information. A primary source, secondary source, and gut feeling are the three areas that you get this gathering of information from. Primary source means you were there, you saw it happen, or uh, you know that it was recorded and you saw it happen, or it was audioed and you heard it happen. The secondary source is basically somebody has told you this is what has happened and they're telling you from their perspective with their bias and their filter system, this is how they saw it happen. Okay, a little bit less reliable, a lot of, a lot of things contributing to that that aren't you know clean, totally clean, but okay. Then there is the gut feeling. Trust your gut. Oh boy, do I hate colloquials, but... This one seems to work. So in that regard, trust what you feel. By the way, that's also a time that you pray and you let God with the Holy Spirit help to guide you in what you are understanding and thinking. Don't disregard that. Always leave yourself available for a higher power to influence your decisions. This is the area that you do that in. It's in the gathering information stage. Okay, so now we'll go to the, the, the fourth step, and, and that's basically um, taking a look at uh, what, what is the criteria? We want to create a criteria, so will this information ensure safety for your loved one? Do you have the resources needed to complete these tasks? Is your timeline realistic? Do you understand the negative impacts of your actions may create? And what would you want others to do if they were making this decision on your behalf? And then the, the sixth step in the decision-making process is choose the best solution for this decision so that you can then act on it. And we'll talk about acting in the third coping skill, which is to... Uh, design a plan of action, develop a, determine a solution, develop a decision, and design a plan of action. You see, um, we, we could just give you this information about these learning seminars, and that's what most people do. They'll, they'll sit there and they'll say, oh yeah, come to our seminar, and we're gonna show you, uh, you know, exactly how to uh, you know, do peer-to-peer -peer coaching and, and how to include a peer-to-peer -peer coach. And, okay, thanks a lot. Donuts in the back, questions if you want. 
Um, we appreciate your listening to our 27 slides in an hour and 30 minutes. And um, good luck. That's not what we're doing here. We're doing pretty much that. But we're also saying, slow down. You're not going anywhere. Now you need to determine a solution, develop a decision, and design a plan of action. Because you're not empowered yet. Let's face it. You knowing about an issue, <laughs> that, that and a nickel will get you a cone of ice cream. So that, that doesn't get you far. It doesn't get you far enough. You're still in the middle of it. Until you can act on it, then you're empowered. But you don't have empowerment until you can get others involved in what you're doing to help you do it even better. And that comes in the next of your coping skills, which is for you to design a plan of action. So let's get real. Having a decision-making model, and by the way, corporate America uses this. I use this. When I was in the artillery as a captain, I would be in a personnel armored vehicle. I would have four antennas out of the top. I'd have a handset in each hand and one strap to each side of my uh, chin strap. So I'd have four handsets attached to me. I had the infantry on one, the tanks on another. I had the commander back at, at the battery with the guns 18 miles behind me. And I had a corporal sitting there with a map showing me exactly where these elements were that were requesting artillery. You want to talk about making decisions? <laughs> There's a lot of scenarios that we make decisions in in our lives. And I just want you to know, as often as possible, we use this kind of model, although a lot faster in those scenarios, but just the same. Quality decisions are made from a quality process. Get used to using a quality process, and you will find yourself making quality decisions. God bless you in your journey and all the decisions that you will make. I want to thank you. Once again, my name is Roy Poyan. I'm a chemical dependency counselor licensed in the state of Ohio and a certified mental health coach. If you need to, give me a call, 440-385-7605. Have already completed this decision-making model, and we'll go through it together with you, just in case you want to get it right. Okay, I want to basically say to you that this is not easy, and it's going to get a lot more difficult if you don't have refined and have a successful you know, way of dealing with issues. The determine a solution, develop a decision, design a plan of action will put you on that course. Thank you very much. Stand up for yourself and I'll back you up because problems don't solve themselves. I'll tell you what, instead of would or could, I think you should draw a line in the sand and stand your ground. It's for your own good. <laughs>